Welcome to The Bottom Line, where we examine trending and important news. On this week's episode, we take a look at the LCDS and its extended version and developments made. We also looked at the failed Vice News interview that tried to implicate Vice President Dr. Bart Jagdew in bribery and corruption allegations. Finally, we take a look at the local content policy, a document ensuring Guyanese benefit from Guyana's resources. The PPPC in its manifesto promised to reinstitute the low carbon development strategy to help achieve prosperity for all Guyanese by deploying earnings from forest climate services to diversify the economy and create more jobs and opportunities utilizing a non-carbon intensive pathway. Energy is key for the economic growth of Guyana and for the improved quality of life for all Guyanese. The PPPC has committed to providing affordable, stable and reliable energy to benefit both households and businesses. The plan is to implement a program with an energy mix which includes hydro, solar and wind which will lead to more than 400 megawatts of newly installed capacity for residential and commercial industrial users. The reality of Guyana's goal to transition to renewable energy is now even closer. In fact, on June 22, 2022, an agreement was signed to finance Guyana's largest solar project set to benefit thousands of Guyanese. The agreement between Guyana, the Kingdom of Norway and the Inter-American Development Bank will see the financing of eight large-scale solar energy projects. In total, the projects will provide 27,000 households with cheap and clean energy, benefiting approximately 70,000 people. The project supports and fits hand in hand with Guyana's low carbon ambitions under the new and expanded low carbon development strategy 2030. The Guyana Utility Scale Solar Voltic Program GUISOL will see eight utility scale photovoltaic solar projects totaling 33 megawatts and associated 34 megawatt energy storage system distributed across three areas in Guyana. The program will be implemented by Guyana and the IDB. Since 2009, Guyana has received US 220 million as results-based payments from Norway under the first phase of the LCDS. These funds have been invested in the country's low carbon development, financing renewable energy, flood protection, green job creation, as well as land titling and development of funds for indigenous people. Solar energy generation is just one component of Guyana's low carbon goals under the LCDS. Under this national advancement plan, Guyana looks to complement the grid with other forms of clean and renewable energy, namely natural gas, hydropower, wind power and even biomass. It is anticipated by 2030, 70% of Guyana's energy mix will be supplied from green energy. Local content means the active participation and development of Guyanese labour and suppliers in the petroleum sector and the benefit that arises from expenditure in the sector on labor, goods and services for Guyanese industry, the economy and the wider society. Rams Logistics, a Trinidad company offering full service supply chain management in Guyana, was denied a local content certificate to operate in Guyana's oil and gas sector. The company had previously said that it had become a 51% Guyanese owned company after divesting. The local content secretariat is, however, tasked with verifying this information before issuing a certificate. Rams Logistics sold 51% of the company to Trinidad born businessman Deepak Lal, who has Guyanese parentage. Many persons have rejected the move to use a Trinidadian with decades old Guyanese heritage to satisfy the requirement in the law as fronting or a rent a citizen arrangement. The business community has voiced its concern, calling it a clear attempt to find a way around the law that will have to stand legal scrutiny. The Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, in a recent statement, said the Chamber would like to state that local participation must be done in a manner that engenders meaningful and genuine partnership. Such participation will ensure that benefits occur not just to Guyanese owners, but to Guyana. The GICC wishes to strongly repudiate any enterprise or citizen that seeks to exploit the local content framework by operating under the guise of local participation when it is not, and in fact, the reality of the operation. 
The GICC added that this phenomenon, commonly referred to as fronting or rent a citizen, has the potential to reduce the amount of value which accures to Guyana and runs counter to the spirit and intent of the Local Content Act. As such, the Chamber calls on the Local Content Secretariat to examine the beneficial ownership of enterprises seeking to obtain local content certificates and recommends that the burden of proof regarding beneficial ownership lies with the enterprise seeking to apply for the certificate. This will act as a layer of protection against those seeking to operate in an unethical and unpatriotic manner. End of quote. The Private Sector Commission issued a statement expressing its full support of government's intention to take strong action against entities that are attempting to circumvent Guyana's local content law. I quote, The PSC is concerned by the ongoing practice to bundle contracts which often limits local businesses participating in the value chain. The Commission will continue its advocacy to ensure that the local content laws aid the utilization of Guyanese goods and services and supports skills development and the training and employment of citizens, the statement noted. In addition to the 51% ownership, the law also stipulates that Guyanese nationals must hold at least 75% of executive and senior management positions and at least 90% of non-managerial and other positions. By its own admission on Thursday last, the board of directors of Rams Logistics comprised of three Guyanese, including Lal, and two foreigners. The board's structure has also been criticized as failing to meet the requirements that companies must have Guyanese holding 75% of the executive and senior management positions in order to be considered a local company. High-level sources have revealed that a few months ago, the company was fined $20 million by the Guyana Revenue Authority for breach of its customs regulations as attempts were made to bypass safeguards put in place. The GRA also requests reasons from the logistics company on why its brokerage license should not be revoked. The company currently handles a majority of logistic contracts offered by the U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil, amounting to billions. There has been disappointment given the much hype that the opposition made about the Vice News interview weeks before it came out. If you look at the total interview, the one that the Vice President released several months back, unedited, it was nearly two hours long. With even more allegations than the final product that was actually published by Vice as it was unedited and dealt with several issues. The framing of their report could clearly see the Vice President being vindicated when he spoke about Guyana not wanting to become a geopolitical pawn. When pressed in the Vice interview about China and its role in Guyana and the Western Hemisphere, the Vice President made it clear that Guyana is not going to participate in any anti-China hysteria. Dr. Jagdeo doubled down that the PPPC administration will look out for Guyana and what is best for Guyanese. While noting that Guyana has had extremely good and growing relations with the United States of America at the bilateral level and adding that the United States was Guyana's largest investor. Nevertheless, Guyana will work with many others, including China. In the almost two-hour interviews that Vice News had with the Vice President, just about one minute of it was used in the final production. Aubrey Norton, during a recent press conference, said, and I quote, It is clear that the vice president, as a senior government official, is purportedly guaranteeing foreign investors the support of the PPP government outside the confines of the law. But where is the guarantee, Mr. Norton? Let's hear from the VP. You had to know you were being scammed at that time by a, 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 somebody who was leveraging contact. So they came to my house. They tried to orchestrate Sue to bring them to my house, pressure him to bring them to my house, and could not, even in my house, when they are secretly recording me, get me to agree to be involved in, an, in, a, in a hotel and casino deal, nor offer me and show that I took a bribe. They've done this around the world with a lot of leaders who they actually have taken money and all of that. Couldn't find that. So that was the damp squib of it all. They had access into my home, secretly recording me, and this is it. And this is about 15 minutes going on. 
It's not like one minute they were there for. We're sitting there chatting. I'm trying to get me to say this. Now, through the course of the conversation, they were trying to get me to also say that the casino license must be given to them exclusively. So let me go back now to how this project was done. So in November 2020, in October 2020, if you go to the newspapers, you will see that the Ministry of Tourism put out an ad for expressions of interest for people who are interested in building hotels. So uh, that was closed on November 2nd, a public process. We received about 18 applications. There was a committee that was set up, the president chairing it, because we said we wanted to move that sector quickly. Myself, Minister O'Neill, the president, Peter Ramsrup, plans and survey everybody to move the process along. Of the 18 proposals we had, 12 or so received MOUs. And since then, Sue, who had nothing to do with this is on his land, put in a expression of interest through a public pro 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 um, process and had an MOU, one of the 12 that got an MOU. Now the MOU doesn't confer any special treatment to Sue or anyone else. They get all are standard. You can get a 10 years tax holiday, you, um, you get the concessions on mach mach machinery and equipment and everything for the hotel, tax-free concession. And if you have a hotel that is above 150 rooms and four star service, you can then get a casino license. All, anybody. And that's a standard regime for the country. He got one like that. This arrangement here was to try to get me to say he will get an exclusive thing licensed to. And I said, no, 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 the law is, I deal with government side of things. The law is that you, Anybody, that is the law, 150 rooms, anyone who builds a hotel would get the same thing. So Sue did not get anything um, special there. And it was not a government project we were describing. It was his investor he wanted me to meet. And the, the investor, the so who is now the reporter, was trying to get me to say I'm part, I can be part of this deal, uh, which I said no. And then, He's trying to get exclusivity from the government for the, the casino license. And I said, no, I deal with government business who deals with the other stuff. So this is the tenure of the conversation from my, from my memory. So this was the process. I don't know, as I said before, what Sue has been telling people until now. Has this been access for us? I've had the same phone in 20 something years. The same phone number in 20 odd years. In, in the party, almost thousands of people have my number. Every day they send me, well not every day, some, a lot of them send me WhatsApp messages. My number has not changed, that's it. I believe for the, a party and, a, a, and anyone to be effective, you have to give people access. We don't know, and there are lots of people who've been leveraging this access to their own benefit. In this case, I didn't, didn't deny this guy is my friend. I didn't deny he was my friend. And I did not, uh, it was his investor. This was a government project like a mile of fall or some other project we're discussing. It was his investor that he wanted me to meet, his investor. Fai seemingly did not invest much time nor effort in fact-checking Sue, for they would have found out that the U.S. 200 million schooner to Perico Road is still in the design stage 
and has not been tendered as yet. And the Linden to Muburo Road was awarded via public tender to a Brazilian contracting firm. That claims of a bribe of $1.5 billion by China are completely false, for while U.S. $1.5 billion in projects have been identified, including the Amila Hydro Falls project, it has to undergo negotiation. The Amila Falls Hydro project is a perfect case in point, even though the loan has been agreed so in principle for this important project, the government of Guyana were unable to conclude a deal with the Chinese company because the cost and conditions were not deemed favorable to the Guyanese people. Vice asserted that Su owns oil blocks when no record of this exists and reputable international organizations such as Global Witness have never mentioned Su after years of intensive investigation. Vice President Jagdio gives his ear to all at official outreaches, private and public functions, in his office, his home, and when out for a cup of coffee. The vice president is never aloof or rude and always willing to assist. The vice president lives a life of service and for that, Guyana is a better place. <music>